Talking and Start Living by Dale Carnegie Chapter 14 If you do this, you will never worry about ingratitude. I recently met a businessman in Texas who was burned up with indignation. I was warned that he would tell me about it within 15 minutes after I met him. He did. The incident he was angry about had occurred 11 months previously, but he was still burned up about it. He couldn't speak of anything else. He had given his 34 employees $10,000 in Christmas bonuses approximately, $300 each and no one had thanked him. I am sorry, he complained bitterly, that I ever gave them a penny. An angry man, said Confucius, is always full of poison. This man was so full of poison that I honestly pitied him. He was about 60 years old. Now, life insurance companies figured that, on the average, we will live slightly more than two-thirds of the difference between our present age and 80. So this man if he was lucky probably had about 14 or 15 years to live. Yet he had already wasted almost one of his few remaining years by his bitterness and resentment over an event that was past. And gone. I pitied him. Instead of wallowing in resentment and self-pity, he might have asked himself why he didn't get any appreciation. Maybe he had underpaid and overworked his employees. Maybe they considered a Christmas bonus not a gift, but something they had earned. Maybe he was so critical and unapproachable that no one dared or cared to thank him. Maybe they felt he gave the bonus because most of the profits were going for taxes, anyway. On the other hand, maybe the employees were selfish, mean, and ill-mannered. Maybe this. Maybe that. I don't know any more about it than you do. But I do know what Dr. Samuel Johnson said, gratitude is a fruit of great cultivation. You do not find it among gross people. Here is the point I am trying to make, this man made the human and distressing mistake of expecting gratitude. He just didn't know human nature. If you saved a man's life, would you expect him to be grateful? You might but Samuel Leibovitz, who was a famous criminal lawyer before he became a judge, saved 70, eight men from going to the electric chair. How many of these men, do you suppose, stopped to thank Samuel Leibovitz, or ever took the trouble to send him a Christmas card? How many? Guess. That's right none. Christ healed ten lepers in one afternoon but, how many of those lepers even stopped to thank him? Only one. Look it up in St. Luke. When Christ turned around to his disciples and asked, where are the other nine? They had all run away. Disappeared without thanks. Let me ask you a question, why should you and independent Oregon this businessman in Texas expect more thanks for our small favors than was given Jesus Christ? And when it comes to money matters? Well, that is even more hopeless. Charles Schwab told me that he had once saved a bank cashier who had speculated in the stock market with funds belonging to the bank. Schwab put up the money to save this man from going to the penitentiary. Was the cashier grateful? Oh, yes, for a little while. Then he turned against Schwab and reviled him and denounced him the very man who had kept him out of jail. If you gave one of your relatives a million dollars, would you expect him to be grateful? Andrew Carnegie did just that. But if Andrew Carnegie had come back from the grave a little while later, he would have been shocked to find this relative cursing him. Why? Because old Andy had left $365 million to public charities and had cut him off with one measly million, as he put it. That's how it goes. Human nature has always been human nature and it probably won't change in your lifetime. So why not accept it? Why not be as realistic about it as was old Marcus Aurelius, one of the wisest men who ever ruled the Roman Empire? He wrote in his diary one day, I'm going to meet people today who talk too much people who are selfish, egotistical, ungrateful. But I won't be surprised or disturbed, for I couldn't imagine a world without such people. That makes sense, doesn't it? If you and I go around grumbling about ingratitude, who is to blame? Is it human nature or is it our ignorance of human nature? Let's not expect gratitude. Then, if we get some occasionally, it will come as a delightful surprise. If we don't get it, we won't be disturbed. Here is the first point I am trying to make in this chapter, it is natural for people to forget to be grateful, so, if we go around expecting gratitude, we are headed straight for a lot of heartaches. 
I know a woman in New York who is always complaining because she is lonely. Not one of her relatives wants to go near her and no wonder. If you visit her, she will tell you for hours what she did for her nieces when they were children, she nursed them through the measles and the mumps and the whooping cough, she boarded them for years, she helped to send one of them through business school, and she made a home for the other until she got married. Do the nieces come to see her? Oh, yes, now and then, out of a spirit of duty. But they dread these visits. They know they will have to sit and listen for hours to half-failed reproaches. They will be treated to an endless litany of bitter complaints and self-pitying sighs. And when this woman can no longer bludgeon, browbeat, or bully her nieces into coming to see her, she has one of her spells. She develops a heart attack. Is the heart attack real? Oh, yes. The doctors say she has a nervous heart, suffers from palpitations. But the doctors also say they can do nothing for her her trouble is emotional. What this woman really wants is love and attention. But she calls it gratitude. And she will never get gratitude or love, because she demands it. She thinks it's her due. There are thousands of women like her, women who are ill from ingratitude, loneliness, and neglect. They long to be loved, but the only way in this world that they can ever hope to be loved is to stop asking for it and to start pouring out love without hope of return. Does that sound like sheer, impractical, visionary idealism? It isn't. It is just horse sense.